Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up. So today um, I thought I would do another pattern review for you and I'm going to review the Sew House 7 Burnside Bibs pattern. So this is the pattern here, okay. It's a dungaree pattern and there are two options. You can either have a fitted version or a loose fit version that you can fit yourself, okay. So before I go into my review of this pattern, I thought I would show you the finished article. So these are the bibs. Now it's very difficult to see them in black because black just doesn't show up very well at all. But this is a black linen. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and it's got a sort of waistband at the front here, bib at the front that you can have a pocket on or not. Um, it's top stitched and then at the back, the straps cross over at the back. I've got version two on, which is the loose fit version that you can fit to sort of fit yourself through some belt loops at the back. And if I stand up on my chair, oh, there we go. They're quite wide legged, as you can see. I've tied them at the front, there's a tie there. I don't know if you can see them at the back. It's very, a bit difficult to see really, but I will put some pictures in of me wearing them. Um, and there, I don't know if you can see how they tie. They've got pockets at the sides here, two pockets, one there, obviously one there. Um, they've also got rear pockets as well. I don't know if you can see those just there, two rear pockets and yeah, they're really, really comfy. So let me just uh, readjust my camera. Sorry about that if I'm giving you a bit of a headache there. Okay, so yeah, the Sew House 7 Burnside Bibs. So I um, have wanted a pair of dungarees for some time. They seem to be really popular at the minute. Lots of people are making them up. There's various patterns out there that you can choose from. Skinny fit, wide leg fit like these ones, or retro versions, vintage versions, etc. There are absolutely tons out there. I do have a couple of patterns from the big four that I'll put a link to a couple of those pictures here that are some other choices for you. Um, and then of course there's the Tilly and the Buttons Mila dungarees that came out a couple of weeks ago that I do actually really like. Now um, the thing for me is I'm a pear shape and I do love skinny jeans um, but I've got a big bum and big thighs and um, it, it does bring its own fitting issues if you're trying to fit a skinny fit to fit you when you've got hips okay so for the for my first foray into dungaree making I wanted something that was going to be a bit more casual a bit more easy fitting a bit slouchy that kind of thing and um, when we had all the Black Friday sales back in November last year so House 7 had quite a good discount so at the time I purchased this pattern I also purchased the tea house dress pattern as well and um, I've made the tea house dress, but I will do a separate, uh, I think, I, I don't know if actually, if I showed you though that dress in a, yeah, I did actually, thinking back, I showed you that in a, an earlier vlog back in um, December. And I really like that dress. It fits me really well. And I found the instructions very easy to follow. So obviously this is the second Sew House 7 pattern that I have made. And I was quite confident based on the drafting of the tea house dress and the instructions that this would be fairly straightforward. Um, now I wasn't wrong, okay. I'm absolutely really pleased with how these bibs have turned out. Now I think, I'm not sure whether it is a Canadian or a US company, but the sizing on these, these dungarees goes from double zero up to 20. So I'm assuming that it is American or, or Canadian um, because we don't have double zero in the UK that's sort of like four year old size something like that anyway um, so I looking at the um, measurements I decided that I didn't want to do because this is the first ones that I've ever done I wanted to do I didn't want to do the ones that were really fitted I thought I'd rather do the ones with the adjustable adjustable waist tie at the back so that it, it, it just takes out some of the fitting issues so you know at least with this pattern you do have that option so if I show you a bit more closely on the picture at the front on here I obviously got the pdf pattern 
on that picture there this is the version that I've made so it's a tie waist and there's a lot of ease in the back so that you can pull it in directly to fit you okay and um, if you look at the bottom here um, the one this one here is a fitted version so it has a side zip in it so there's not as much ease in the waistline bit here because you have a side zip to fit it to you now i was worried a little bit worried thinking about all the extra fabric around my hips is that going to make me look even bigger that kind of thing but i needn't have worried because i do think these are quite flattering actually um so yeah so i made a size let me think I think I did a size 8, which is equivalent to a UK size 12, I think. I think that's what I did. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did. The only adjustments I made, I'm 5 foot, five foot 10, 5 foot 11, so the only adjustments I made was I added um, an inch into the bib. There are shortened length and lines on the bib pattern and on the um, leg pattern as well. And I added an inch into the bib on the pattern piece to make sure that the waistline did sort of hit me where my waist is. My waist is about there. So that's worked out quite well. Um, there's also short and lengthen lines along the crotch um, depth and also at the bottom of the legs as well. So you can lengthen there. Now I did learn, I've made a few pairs of trousers recently and I've found that um, I do generally need to lengthen the crotch depth because I tend to be this, this Bit of me from my waist to my sort of full hip tends to be quite long as well so I tend to add in a, another between a half and an inch in that area as well and I did that with these these dungarees and I'm really glad let me just stand up here again I'm really glad that I did um that's not a really good shot of me is that is that guys but anyway and um, yeah I'm really glad that I did because the last thing you want is that that area sort of cutting into you in um, a slouchy trouser. Now I didn't add on any length on the trouser part. I'll just kick up here. I don't know if you can see. There we go. It's pulling up a little bit obviously. Excuse my horrible feet. Um, it's pulling up a little bit because I'm obviously bending my leg but when I'm standing straight they do hit me um, right over um, the bottom of my ankles and right over to my feet so I'm really pleased about that now the only thing I would say is that the hem on the bottom in the pattern it does give you a hem um, allowance of about an inch and a quarter but I didn't have enough for that um, I think I had this linen I think I had only a couple of meters of it and the pattern does ask you does suggest that you have I think it's two and a quarter to two and a half meters um, and I didn't have enough so I basically could only just turn turn under the um, hem at the bottom. So I didn't use a full inch and a half. So if I was going to, um, if, I, if I needed to obviously make a deeper hem, I would have needed a bit more fabric with adding those extra length bits in for me. Now um, you can have, you can make these a cropped version as well. Um, but I thought for the first time that I was making them I would make the full length version. Um, my husband really likes them, but he does, he started singing, come on Eileen. Those of you that have been around as long as me will know, will have heard of that song, Dexy's Midnight Runners, come on Eileen. Go Google it um, and have a look at the original video and you'll know what he's talking about. But anyway, okay. So the bib at the front is fully faced on the inside with the self fabric. Sorry for showing off my uh, chest there. Okay, um, you have this waistband piece at the front that obviously um, it encloses the internal seam of the trousers. The, the pockets themselves have a facing, a small facing just on the inside, but you can just turn them over, I guess, and stitch them that way as well. Um, and yeah, it's quite an interesting construction. The, the way that the trousers are put together is, is a little bit unconventional in the fact that you don't do the, the sort of crotch seam fully in one go. You sort of go so far and then you add in, you, um, oh gosh, let me have a look, just let me have a little quick look because it is really a bit, it was a little bit different to what, how I've normally um, stitched trousers together before. So it did confuse me a little bit. 
Yeah, so basically, what it, it does get you to finish all the seams independently of each other um, on the trouser portion, which is really good because it means that you can you can press out um, the seams really, really well rather than sewing the seams together. And it just allows you a little bit more flexibility if you do need to adjust the trousers once once you've put them together. But it does get you there is a there is a notch sort of inside the the the. The seam just here and when you sew you only sew to this bit before you then start sewing the legs up and then you carry on from there all the way up later on so it's a little bit a little bit different but it works I, I didn't go to my normal method of sewing trousers where you sort of stick one leg in, in the other and then sew around that way and um, this worked really really well and um, I think it's very true to size and I'm quite happy with how they've turned out basically so yeah so overall I think this pattern is is really really good as I say there is there's lots of pieces to it so it can be a little bit daunting when you've cut everything out thinking oh my god there's all these pieces and how they're all going to fit together and I don't know about you but sometimes you just want a quick project it's not a quick project I think it took me from once I'd cut everything out it probably took me about three and a half four hours to sew sew them all together and get everything right but once I'd actually sewn them together and tried them on there was nothing else that I needed to fit um the the, the basically the sizing of them I think is is works really well I didn't need to let out the hips or the inseam or anything at all so um I didn't need to make any further adjustments really so I'm quite happy with how these have turned out so the other thing I like about this pattern is the ties here. Now when it comes to the ties, it gives you, the instructions give you two ways to do them. So basically there's two methods that you can sort of do thin straps basically. There's the tube method where you um, stitch them right sides together and then you can use a loop turner to turn them out or you can use overlocking thread or you can use a pin to do that. and it gives you really clear instructions on how to do that but it does also tell you that if your fabric is quite stiff or thick that you'll find it impossible to do that and the reason for it is because these straps are actually really long um, if you think about it these straps cross over at the back and then they go through the back belt loops and then tie all the way around the waist so there's a, an off there is a really long tube of fabric there now I did try that method with my loop turner and it was just impossible this is quite a drapey linen it's not a very stiff linen but and I did think it would probably work but I think it was just just because of the full length of that um, tube of fabric to make these straps it was just impossible to do that so the other method that the instructions tell you about is the folded method which is very much like when you make bias binding um, so basically it, it shows you here where your fabric you can um fold it in half and then fold the raw edges into the seam line that you've made when you fold it in half and then fold it together and then stitch basically so that is essentially what i did i had to cut a new strap because i've totally destroyed the strap the straps i don't know if you can see yeah there we go. So I've just stitched these together. Is that coming up? I don't know if it's going to focus. It's not focusing very well at all today. I'm really sorry, guys, how this, this camera's not focusing. It's that bit better. Um, so, yeah, so I did the tube method where I folded it together and then just top stitched it all the way along. And that's worked really, really well. So I would suggest that if you have anything, anything that's stiffer than... Um, a cotton fabric a lightweight cotton fabric um go for the go for the folded method rather than the tube method for doing your straps because you'll just not pull it through so overall as i say this is the second sew house seven pattern that i have made and i'm thrilled with it absolutely thrilled with it i think the instructions are very clear very detailed very straightforward they give you lots of options for how you want to adjust the pattern to suit you or the style um and different finishing techniques etc etc and the fit is true um the the you know the very few adjustments that i needed to make it was purely just for the length which which because i'm tall i have to do that with every pattern so that's nothing unusual for me 
I'm absolutely thrilled to bits with these dungarees. I'm really glad that I've made them. It's given me a bit more confidence to try a more fitted pair. As I say, I do have a couple of other patterns for more fitted dungarees that I'd like to have a go in denim, but I've not actually worked with denim before, apart from the Miele, um lightweight jeans that I made last month. Um, so more heavy, stiffer denim I've never worked with before yet. So, but, the, but making these has given me a little bit more confidence to do that now. So overall, I'm absolutely delighted. So let me know what you think. Um, not sure if I'll make another pair and that's only because I just think, well, how many pairs of slouchy dungarees do I really need? Um, I do like the grey version on the picture of the front of the pattern. And if I come across some grey linen, because I just love linen, I think it must be my favourite fabric. Um, I think I might make try and make a grey pair, but otherwise um, I'm absolutely delighted with these. I think they're just going to be great for slouching around with. Um, oh, by the way, I'm wearing it with my um, another Jennifer Lauren Gable top that I made. It's just out of a lightweight cream jersey. So, so yeah, so that's it. Hope you've enjoyed my review and let me know what you think. If you've sewn any Sew How 7 patterns yourself, what do you think to their patterns? Um, are there any other um, dungarees that you you like or you've seen? Um, have you sewn dungarees yourself? Let me know anyway in the comments below. Okay guys, that's it from me today. Take care. Bye-bye.